who somehow brings meaning into the meaning. Pretty crazy. Hey everybody, it's Dr. Cody with Tech for Psych. Every once in a while, you see something that feels like a paradigm shift. Turn it on? Yeah, just put it on and then I can help you get it aligned. <laughs> oh man, that's comfortable. Yeah. So this is the Kernel Flow, and many would say that it is the most advanced mobile brain scan helmet in the world. It has 52 different modules for full head coverage. Each module has a laser in the center that shines and goes through the skull, bounces off the blood flow around the brain, and can detect the oxygenation levels of the blood. This reflects the activation patterns of the neurons in your brain. In many ways, this thing can track the activation levels of your cerebral cortex better than a $3 million MRI machine at a fraction of the cost. It doesn't get the structural data, but it does get the functional data, plus it's mobile. I've talked about Kernel many times on this channel as something to really look forward to, and now that they are shipping units, it's really exciting. I was so excited to be invited to go visit their headquarters in Culver City, California, and even meet their founder, Brian Johnson. Brian's a really inspiring individual for me because uh, he really has risked it all to take millions upon millions of dollars of his own money to invest in this company that really could change the world and is right up my alley of neuroscience and how that can be applied to everyday life. I had a neurofeedback coaching call with my clients the evening before, so I got up very early the next morning in my home in Las Vegas to make the drive out to LA to meet with Dr. Nico Regente that afternoon in Santa Monica. It is 4.30 a.m. and we are driving from Las Vegas to L.A. I packed up my film gear and was off through the desert to L.A. I was filled with anticipation because I'd never seen a Kernel Flow headset before and I was really excited to experiment with the real thing. Currently there's less than 50 of these completed headsets in the entire world right now. Hello. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Hello. Hey, hey, what's going on, Cody? What is this place? This is the Institute for Advanced Consciousness Studies in Santa Monica, California. Wow, very nice. You guys have a lot of really cool technology in here. Yeah. Do you wear this helmet all the time? Oh yeah, all day. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the show. All right. First on the trip, I visited a good friend, Dr. Nico Regente, who is awarded one of the very first Kernel Flow devices within their Flow 50 program to do research on neurofeedback programs that could help assist meditation. His lab is called the Institute of Advanced Consciousness Studies and is not far from Kernel headquarters, being based in Santa Monica, California. They have a lot of other really cool guests gadgets in there and they're doing a lot of cutting edge neuroscience work besides just with the kernel flow. My name is Nico Regenzi. I'm principal investigator at the Institute for Advanced Consciousness Studies. Can you tell us about this place? Like what is this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's actually a, a cool, unique boutique research outlet. Uh, we're a 501c3, uh, predominantly focused on contributing to the scientific corpus on anything related to consciousness, meditation, altered states of consciousness, and how we can both identify and help to reinstantiate some of those altered states with the eventual hope of promoting human flourishing and, and net good. The Silicon Beach of Los Angeles is really starting to get this more neurotech focus. You know, Kernel's not too far away, Neuralink's not too far away. This building is populated with psychiatrists and researchers. Um, so it kind of felt like a pretty natural home, stone's throw from USC where we have collaborators and, you know, UCLA is right down the road as well, so. And what's this device that's next to you? <laughs> this amazing thing. This is the Kernel Flow 50, um, which has been developed by Kernel. It's a FNIRS device that's essentially able to go on the head and you know record or infer underlying neural activity from uh, local recruitment of blood flow to specific regions. We focused on um, being able to use this device as a way to identify gradations within the meditative experience such that you know if you have any experience with meditation um, you know that there's kind of ebbs and flows to the process right uh, sometimes when you're in more 
deeper states versus more shallow states. And we basically wanted to be able to use this device to identify those deeper states so that we could then eventually drive a neurofeedback based approach to encourage more rapid and longer lengths of stay in those deeper states. And I think that that's something that resonated well with you know, Colonel's mission and, you know, their CEO, Brian Johnson's mission as well, which is, you know, this helping to usher in this era of the quantified self. Really, the, the main thing that I, that we're going to be doing is, is using the FNIRs as an analog, an analog to the EEG signal that we're collecting um, for our meditation study, which is essentially working with highly experienced Vipassana meditators as they're meditating and having them spontaneously report of their own accord when they've recently surfaced from meditative states and letting us know on a scale of one to five how deep that state was. And then basically we're using that on, on subsequent sessions and a whole host of machine learning attempts to then try and determine how, any one, how far any one state is from that ideal deepest state so that we could then eventually drive a neurofeedback pro protocol that helps to enhance that process. So we're basically what we're doing is we're putting it in the pit against EEG and seeing which one performs better. Um, so that's kind of the first thing that we're, we're looking to uh, test out with the FNews. Is there any way that uh, tech for psych audience could help whether being research subjects or uh, where they can go to take a look at your work or something yeah. you guys are doing? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, our website is advancedconsciousness.org. Uh, if you're remotely in the LA area, you can come and be a research subject. Um, we pay well, $30 an hour um, to be in, and you get to try out all these cool different devices. So, you know, we're working with some companies in the area that have developed pretty cool technologies um, that anecdotally have shown immense efficacy in promoting sleep, relaxation, you know, more calm dispositions. Uh, so we're basically, you know, applying scientific rigor to that process. Uh, so there's a lot of cool new emerging tech that we have here uh, that you could come try out and uh, help, out help out our scientific uh, progress in the process. I had a great time at the Institute and I got to try this amazing reflective glass case from Lumina Labs that took me through a wild meditative experience that you see on the video here. One of the reasons why kernel flow is so exciting is because it can deliver cutting edge information about the activation patterns of our brain and experiences like what Lumina Labs had at the Institute. Then the next day I got to visit kernel headquarters and I was really, really excited. They didn't want me filming inside of their lab, likely because of intellectual property concerns. They're still basically a startup at this point, but they have released behind the scenes videos on their YouTube channel that gives a great look at what it looked like. All the headsets are currently built in house and have a host of new technological advancements within them. They even had a wall with all their prototypes that I wish I could have taken a picture of, which because it was so cool, but uh, I guess you'll just have to take my word for it. The helmet uses time domain FNIRS, which tracks exact levels of blood oxygenation so the only place I was allowed to film was in their testing room in which we did a neuroscience experiment called grid shot. It was this test where I had the kernel flow on detecting my brain activation patterns as I played this game where you actually shoot different circles that show up on the screen as fast and accurate as possible. Gridshot is designed as a trainer that allows people to improve their reaction time and mostly get better at first person shooter video games. Brian Johnson recently went head to head with the Call of Duty champion Seth Abner, otherwise known as Scump, and their brain data showed fascinating results. And you can see this video on the kernel YouTube page. Basically, Skump was in a league of his own. He was incredibly fast at the game and accurate and scored way higher. But what was really interesting from a neuroscience perspective is that his cerebral cortex seemed to be much more metabolically efficient during the grid shot exercise than Brian's was. He really was able to get into flow state and maintain minimal levels of activation as he really fell into the game and obtained a really high score. In comparison, it looked like Brian's brain was overactivated and had to work really hard to obtain a lesser score. So I did the grid shot study and they sent me the results within hours of doing the training and my brain actually looked 
a lot more like Brian Johnson's brain, where it was lighting up and overworking as I tried really hard to get a good score and didn't even score that high. Now, I played a good amount of video games in my youth. I don't play them as much as I used to, but it's obvious that I was nowhere near Scump's level of flow state when he actually played these first-person shooter games. Basically, what you see on the feedback is average levels of activation patterns of my brain graphed onto a 3D map of a brain. They couldn't give me any population data level statistics because they're still collecting that in the study. But one would expect that in the near future, we would be able to do tasks such as the grid shot and see how our brain function compares to the population norms. This has been available in brain systems before like quantitative EEG, but never before have we had the potential to track a much more spatially specific brain activation patterns from FNIRs based on blood flow before. So I had an absolutely great day at Colonel. Their staff was very welcoming, answered questions, helped show me some of the lab space, uh, took me to the testing room. We did the test, got some footage of the device. And even towards the end of my stay, Brian came out and had a conversation with me, which I really appreciated. He's a very busy person and a really inspiring individual as well. He didn't want to appear on camera and that's fine. He's got uh, a multi-million dollar company to run with hundreds of employees. I can understand if someone doesn't want to be on camera that day. And we had a great conversation. Uh, he came out of his office and sat down in the lobby with me. And one of the first things he asked me was, what what is your assessment of the landscape? My answer was it needs a lot of work. And we talked a lot about uh, how perception of brain computer interface devices is evolving in the general population. Brian's view is that up until now, brain computer interface devices have been viewed as direct control devices. You know, can a paraplegic put on a BCI helmet and control a robotic arm or a cursor on the internet? Or will you be able to surf the internet with your mind with a BCI device? All very active based. But what he is trying to do at Kernel is reintroduce the conversation of BCIs as a data collection device. If you think about it, anything that we measure, we can improve. We've done that with glucose levels, with diabetes, steps, and different BMI measures for fitness. And now we have the potential of having a Fitbit for the brain. And as I said before, this would be revolutionary for things like mental health treatment, health and wellness, learning, focus at work, and a ton of different applications that we don't even know about yet. One thing that struck me about Brian is he thinks big. And what he said is that we need to use data from the brain to almost re-engineer society, civilization. We need to understand how our brains react to different stimuli and redesign up from there. How do we design our cities? How do we structure tax codes? <laughs> how do we do everything in our day-to-day -day lives and how could we redesign it to make it easier on ourselves, make it easier on our brains in order to have the happiest, most fruitful and productive lives possible. One of the things I was able to talk to Brian about was my experience as a YouTube person in which I have all kinds of comments and people asking about BCI technologies, what I had seen with other devices and just being on the forefront and having my elbows in the mud about how to interact with the public when it comes to the understanding of brain computer interface devices. And here's where I would like to thank you, the audience, for always just being engaged and asking questions on videos because these questions really reach such a high level of design in revolutionizing this brain computer interface world. So I want to thank you for that and uh, offering me insights to your experiences about how to interact with these devices. That allows me to have conversations at these very high levels about what is needed to make these devices truly effective and have a real world impact. So after a really nice and inspiring conversation with Brian, I gathered up my camera gear and headed back out in the beautiful LA weather to enjoy the rest of that Friday and the weekend. My wife and I had a great time in town visiting the Santa Monica Pier, having lunch in Hollywood and walking around Rodeo Drive. But every once in a while, my thoughts would drift back to the Colonel Lab and think, do people really know what's going on there? In a quiet little corner of Culver City, California, something truly amazing is really happening. And up the street from the Santa Monica Pier, my friend Nico is doing some of the most groundbreaking research on the brain ever. The Colonel Flow helmet really could be a game changer and we'll see how effective time domain FNIRs really can be in allowing us to understand the activation level patterns of our brain and educate us about how the mind and the brain work. It's really the first time we have a mobile device capable of such high quality data that has the potential of utilizing the supply chain and bringing down costs to really revolutionize how we do neuroscience. 
At the end of the holiday weekend, we drove back to Las Vegas, and as I got outside of the city limits of LA back into the desert, I couldn't help but feel a wave of relaxation as I got out of the high energy of the city. I truly enjoy the solitude and the mystery of the desert and find it comforting as I do my daily work of planning and editing YouTube videos about neuroscience, but I can't help but sit here and think back in LA, something incredible is brewing. There's an energy there. And this trip really left me feeling even more focused and inspired to document these advancements of neuroscience with video, to test the products, use them with my coaching clients, get feedback from them, and offer my insights to the engineers and designers of this technology as a physician to do my part in helping bring this technology to people that it can really help.